Our Across the Aisle segment tonight. Last week, conservative writer Kevin Williamson was fired from the Atlantic over his pro-life views. Liberals started a campaign to fire Williamson shortly after he was hired because he had previously suggested punishing women who have abortions. Now, I want to be very clear here that while I am pro-life, I do not support punishing women who have abortions. I support punishing the doctors that perform abortions. But it's ironic because Williamson was hired in the first place because he was a conservative and the Atlantic wanted to bring on board writers with more diverse viewpoints. But I guess when they realized that this was an actual conservative and not Brett Stevens at the New York Times who bills himself as a conservative but also wants to repeal the Second Amendment, I guess the Atlantic got too scared of the online liberal lynch mob to keep Williamson on their team. With me now, history professor and author of Obama's America, Ian Reifowitz. Ian, good to see you. Good to see you again, Liz. All right, Ian, give me your take on this. There are a lot of liberals. This is not merely a conservative issue. There are a lot of uh, people on the left, a lot of liberals who are condemning this as an act of cowardice from the Atlantic. I agree. What do you think? Uh, well, the first thing I want to say is that this is a really a serious conversation. And, and I, if I was writing an essay, you know, I wish I, would, I wish I had two weeks to write an essay and, and and really sit and think and let my thoughts marinate because, uh, you know, I might change my opinion two different times. These are the words uh, of a professor of, through of and really, through. You know, <laughs> right? Right? No, really. Uh, because this is, this is not just sort of a simple thing. Uh, I, there's, there's uh, you know, liberals who are upset about this. There are conservatives who are upset about it. What I don't want it to see, though, is have this be just sort of another volley in, you know, in a culture war where, where people say, oh, the liberal media is intolerant, you know. Let, let, let's not, you know, let's not lose sight of the fact that this is still a center-left publication that wanted to hire a conservative. We don't see liberals writing on the pages of the, you know, National Review. We don't have liberal hosts on Fox News. So they were trying to do something I think that's important, which is expand the viewpoints of their of their audience. I agree. I agree. I think I think the Atlantic, you know, I think the Atlantic screwed up here. I think it, you know, if they're going to hire Kevin Williamson and knowing not just that he's a conservative who wanted to punish women who have abortions, but let's be clear, he said he wanted to hang women who have abortions. He wanted not just not just the death penalty, but you know, lethal injection wasn't good. He wanted to hang them. So that's not a conservative opinion, I would argue. That's a, an extreme opinion. And in fact, the National Right to Life Committee, uh, after President Trump as a candidate talked about wanting to punish women, they, there was a quote from the excuse me, the March for Life said, "quote No pro-lifer would ever want to punish a woman who has chosen abortion." You said the right. same thing. National Right to Life Committee said the same. Thing. So ha hanging, this is an extreme person. Right. But did, the did, you who, who the him, did you listen to the podcast? Did you listen to the podcast that they were quoting? Yeah. Well, that was a thing. That's a thing. It, it was in the, the same thing that was in the tweet was in the podcast. If you're sure, going right. to hire and the I'm guy, asking, did you did you listen to the full context that tweet, of that? Uh, I listened to some of it. I'm not sure if I listened to as, as much of it as you did. Uh, I listened to as, you know to, and then to did what you, I was did able you, to get. Did as you hear? An and, and I'm not trying to put, I'm not trying to put you particularly on the spot here. No, I'm no. just saying when no, we're talking about this online liberal lynch mob here, like I I fully disagree with that. I don't think we should punish women at all for having abortions. I think we should punish doctors who commit these abortions. You know my views on uh, abortion and on life here, but I, I don't think by any means that the women should be punished. I, I would hesitate uh, to say, or I, I guess I would hesitate to take any liberals seriously who actually researched what Kevin Williamson said and thought that he was being serious. It was a provocative thing to say. I wouldn't have said it, but to think that he was, or to insinuate that he was actually advocating for that, he's against capital punishment even for murderers, even for rapists. He is against capital punishment. He's against lynching. He was uh, making a quip, perhaps an ill-advised quip, on his podcast. But it, it seems to me that the left or the Atlantic, by that point, was just looking for a reason to fire him because all these liberals online had given them so much garbage, so much flack that they actually didn't want to include him. And I guess the thesis of this segment is, is this the point that we have gotten to in our society where conservative writers, if they're pro-life, there is no room for that diversity of opinion at perhaps mainstream, uh, mainstream publications? Well, look, there's plenty of room for people who are at mainstream publications who are not in favor of reproductive rights. What Kevin Williamson said, jo joking or not, it, it, nobody is, is arguing that he's an actual physical threat to women, right? It's about whether his writing is, for lack of a better word, the kind of writing that the Atlantic would want to have. I think they made a mistake because if you're going to, you know, to say that it was okay that he tweeted it, but not okay that he said it in a podcast, that's ridiculous. They did a bad job. They didn't do their homework and they didn't think through what they were doing. They actually they said that they knew about the it place, beforehand. Right? 
right? Well, that, they did a bad job. They, they, there's no question. And that's an editorial mistake and that's a management mistake. Uh, I wouldn't call it an ideological mistake, but it's, a, it's an editorial mistake and, it, it, and it's a management mistake. They shouldn't have hired him if they, based on the tweet if they weren't willing to stick with him is the larger point. But that's a pretty extreme opinion. If you're going to start, you know, throwing around a rhetoric there, you know, then you've got to live, live and die, for lack of a better word, by your rhetoric. Uh, the fact is that even President Trump had to walk back his statement about wanting to punish women because it was, it was too far outside the bounds for the, for the right to life movement to tolerate. So next time the Atlantic wants to hire somebody, that's fine, uh, but they need, to do the, they need to do a better job. But I would like to see, you know, there would, it would be great to see liberal writers at the National Review. The point is to, to get people who are conservative to be exposed to liberal points of view and liberals to be exposed to conservative point of view, points of view. I think it's great that you have me on the show. I think most of the time you, you, you let me have my say, which is great. I try uh, and to. And I think that, that's a good thing for, for any audience. You do. No, you yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I, I value our to, debate. I value you know, our debates every week because we don't do what I think these liberal lynch mobs do are doing they refuse to have this discussion if i were jeffrey goldberg at the atlantic you know if if my writers if my staff were coming into my office saying can you believe what kevin williamson wrote are you really going to stand by him i would have sent them right back out to their desks and said listen if you disagree with that write something that refutes his viewpoint write something that factually tears apart his argument don't come whining to me this is part of your job and i i think that's what you and i try to do here we have differing viewpoints differing philosophies but we actually debate it. We don't try to take each other out. Ian, and I do appreciate that.